Hello Divination and welcome. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to creatively combine a row and column backgrounds with Divi's new options. So this is the final design that we'll be designing in today's tutorial. So without wasting a lot of time, let's dive in and let me show you step by step how we managed to create this. So over here, I'm in my admin dashboard. So the first thing I'm going to do is to start off by creating a brand new page. So I'm going to come over here to pages, click on add new, and then I'm just going to call this rows. Click on use the Divi Builder and use Visual Builder. So right now, I mean, this always comes up if this is a brand new install of um, Divi. But in this case, uh, because I've been using Divi for a while, I'm just going to go ahead and click on start building. Otherwise, you can just take the tour and see how you can get started with Divi. Okay, so now with that, uh, the next thing I'm going to do here is to come and add all my columns. So I'm going to click this plus button here and add a single column. The next thing I'm going to do is to add my text row. So I'm just going to uh, search for it, select on text. But for now, I'm not going to uh, add anything in the, uh, in the modules. And also, one quick thing is uh, I prefer designing my website with this snapped to the left. So if I click on this button here, this now snaps to the left. Okay, so I'm just going to save this. So what we're going to do next is to add our background color to this section. So I'm going to come over here to the section settings and I'm going to click on background. Click the second tab because we're going to have a gradient background. So click this plus button, add my first color. Now my first color is going to be an RGBA um, color with a bit of transparency. So I'm going to paste my value in between the brackets. Now, if you'd like to uh, follow along step by step and uh, achieve the same results as I'm going to in this tutorial, I will leave a link to the post in the show notes below where you can go and uh, get all these values. Okay, so I'm going to click here for the second value. And for here, I am going to add my hexadecimal value, which is F7, F7, F7. Next, we're going to come over here to the gradient type and we're going to select radial for this. And then for the uh, direction, we're going to set this to bottom. Okay, and then the start position here, we're going to set this to 31 and the end position to 76. Right, so for now, let's go ahead and save. So the next thing we're going to do here is to make sure that our row is set to full width. So I'm going to come over here to my row sections, click on design, sizing, and then I'm going to set this to full width like that. Next, I'm going to add my background colors. So I'm going to come back here to the uh, content, click on background. And again, we're going to have a um, gradient background. So I'm going to click the second tab, click the plus button and add our first color. So I'm going to paste my color in here like that, add my second color. So I'm going to paste my values between the brackets like that. And note that this is an RGBA value. So the difference between the two is the RGBA usually has the uh, transparency um, on it. And uh, the uh, hexadecimal is just like a flat normal color. Right, so next here on the gradient type, it's fine at linear. The uh, gradient direction is uh, okay at 180. The start at 0% is fine. And then the end here, we're gonna change this to 65. Okay, so now it's time to add our background image. So I'm gonna come over here to my third tab. Click the plus button to add our image. So if you don't have your image in the media library, what you need to do is to click select files and then you need to navigate to where that file is on your computer. But in my case, I have my image in my media library. So I'm gonna click the second tab, click my image, and then click on upload an image. So you can see here, my image is now in the background of my section. All right, so let's come over here to the background image size and we're gonna set this to cover. For the background image position, we're going to center this like that. And then we need this to repeat Y vertical. So I'm going to select that. And finally, for the blending mode, we need to set this to multiply. And now we can see that the blending mode has applied this effect to our background image. Now let's go to our column one background and add our colors. So I'm going to scroll down here until I get to column one background. Click the second tab because we're going to be adding a gradient to this. Click the plus button. So first I'm going to add my color, which is going to be an RGBA value. I'm going to paste my value between the brackets like that. I'm going to paste my second color. Right, so for the gradient type, it's fine here at linear and then for the column gradient direction, we're going to set this to 161, like that. 
Now, sometimes if if the value is not entered, uh, it's not um, being entered correctly. All you can do is just use the slider, so you can just drag this until you get to your desired amount. So in this case, I'm trying to get to 161. In fact, I'll just leave it at 162. And then finally, we're going to come over here to our column start position, set this to 43, and end to 43. Next, let's add our padding. So we're going to come over here to design, click on spacing. And for the custom padding, we're going to add 20 to the top and 30 to the right and 30 to the left, like that. Next, we're going to come over here to our column custom padding, add 200 to the top and 200 to the bottom. Now you can start to see that this design is now taking shape. Okay, so we're done with the row settings. The next thing we're going to do is to add our text in our text module. So I'm going to click this gear icon to go into our text uh, settings. And then I'm going to paste my text in here like that. Next, I'm going to come over here to design, click on our text. And then I'm going to come over here and uh, select my font, which is Playfair. So I'm going to search for it. Yeah, so here it is, Playfair display. I'm going to set my size to 77 like that. And then what I'm going to do um, while I'm here at this setting, I'm going to click this uh, little icon here to set my sizes for my different devices. So I'm going to come over here to my tablet. And you can see right here that, um, in fact, before I do that, I might as well just add the color so you can see the changes that I'm making. So I'm going to paste my color in here. In fact, it's F7, F7, F7. So now we can see the colors. So I'm going to come back here and click on the tablet. So you can see here that things don't look very good on the tablet. So what we need to do now is to add a custom value in order for this to look great on the tablet. So we're going to set this to 64. And then for the smartphone, we're going to set this to 51, like that. Now we need to uh, fix the line height. So I'm going to scroll all the way down here until I get to line height. And we're going to set this to 1EM, like that. And then for the desktop, we're going to set this to 1.7, like that. And then to make this look great, what we're going to do is we're going to set the text orientation to centered. So, so our text now is now centered. Okay, so finally, I'm going to go ahead and save. And then the next thing we're going to do is to add the divider module. So I'm going to come over here, click this plus button and search for my divider module. Select it. And then I'm going to click on show divider. Click on background and I'm going to add my background color for my divider. I'm going to paste my values between the brackets like that. Right, so next I'm going to come over here to design. So I'm going to start off by adding my color. So I'm going to click here and add my color like that. Then next, I'm going to come over here to Styles and making sure that this is set to Solid and the divider position is set to Top. Next, we're going to come over here to Sizing. So for the divider weight, we're going to set this to 11 and the height is fine at 23. Next, for the width, we're going to set this to 0% and we are going to align this to the left. Next, we need to add our custom padding. So I'm going to click on Spacing. And for our padding left, I'm going to set this to 48% like that. Okay, so now we're done with this. I'm going to go ahead and save. So the next thing we're going to do is to add another row. So I'm going to come over here and click this plus button. And we need three columns. I'm going to select my three columns. Now before we add, we add any modules, what I'm going to do is to start by adding all our colors and all our settings. So I'm going to come over here to row settings. And the first thing I'm going to do is to make this full width. So I'm going to click on sizing, make row full width like that. And then I'm going to go back to our content, click on background, and I'm going to click the second tab because we are going to have a gradient. So I'm going to click this plus button and add my first color. I'm going to paste my uh, values between the brackets like that. So next I'm going to add my second color like that. Uh, our gradient direction is fine. Our start position needs to be set to 9% like that and the end position is fine at 100%. Next we're going to add our image so I'm going to come over here to my third tab click the plus button so as before I'm just going to select my same image click upload an image and then I'm going to come over here to my background image blend and set this to multiply. Okay so with this set the next thing we're going to do is to add our column background colors so I'm going to come over here to column one background click the plus button and add my background color. Do the same for column two and column three. 
So now we have all our background colors. Right, so the next thing we're going to do is to come over here to design and click on spacing. Now it's time to add our margins. So for the margin top here, I'm going to add 19. And for the right and left, I'm going to add 200. So notice that I'm adding this, these values to the main row. So the next thing we're going to do now is to add our column padding. Now it's time to add our column paddings. So I'm going to start here with our column one padding. So this is going to be 30 all round like that. And then I'm going to do the same to column two and also column three. In fact, uh, the, the custom margin here, you can see I've added the values in the wrong place. So let's add these to the padding. I was wondering, you know, why things are not looking right. So, so this, these values need to be on the custom padding. Okay, so now it's looking much, much better. Okay, so with all this set, I'm going to go ahead now and save. And then we're going to start adding our text module. So I'm going to click here, add my first text module. Select it. And my first text here is going to be the heading text. So I'm going to come over here. In fact, I'm going to highlight all the text. Click on this uh, paragraph and make sure that this is set to heading 1. And then next, I'm going to come over here to design and stylize this text. So since this is set to heading 1, I'm going to come over here to heading text. And then I'm going to start customizing my heading. Okay, so I'm going to start by searching for my font. So my font is going to be called uh, Railway and it's right here. We're going to set this to all caps. Okay, so the heading size is going to be set to 23. And it's also going to be set to bold. So I'm going to come over here to my header font weight and set this to bold. Next, I'm going to center this text. So I'm going to click here to center this to the uh, to center this. And then I'm going to come over here to my line height and set this to 1.7. So we're done with the heading. I'm going to go ahead and save. And now it's time to add our second text module. So I'm going to click this plus button here, search for my text module. And then I'm going to select it. I'm going to paste my text in here. Now this time, this text I'm pasting here is going to be our paragraph text. And then next, I'm going to click on design to customize this text. Click on text. And again, this is going to be set to railway. So I'm going to come over here, click on the default font, set my text. And our text size here is going to be set to 12. Next, I'm going to add my text color. So I'm just going to paste it in here. Our text line height is fine at 1.7 EM. And our alignment, our text orientation is set to left, which is perfect. Now, as I mentioned before, if you'd like to use these exact uh, values as I am in this tutorial, you can go ahead and follow this step by step. Um, and, I'll link, and I'll link you to the post which has all these values. Okay, so everything is all set now. I'm going to go ahead now and save. So what we need to do next is to clone these and just add them to the rest of these columns. So I'm going to come over here and then just drag this into position like that. Do the same for this. And then go ahead and do the final one. Okay, so let's go ahead and save. Now, the final thing we're going to do here is to add one more row. So I'm going to come over here and add my row and this is going to be a single column now the reason why we're adding this is because this is going to overlap and this is going to bring our extra design that is going to make this look really really cool so for now i'm just going to close this so the first thing i'm going to do is to make this row full width so i'm going to click this gear icon click on design sizing and then i'm going to click on make this row full width next i'm going to add my gradient colors i'm going to come over here to background click my second tab and I'm going to start adding my gradient colors. So I'm going to start off with my first color here, and it's going to have an RGBA value. I'm going to paste the values between the brackets like that. Add my second color. Paste my color between the brackets. And here our linear gradient type is fine. And uh, our gradient direction at 180 is perfect. Start position. We're going to set this to 45. And for our end position, we're going to set this to 91 like that. Next, we're going to come over here to our column background settings. So click on the second tab, click the plus button, and I'm going to add my first color like that. Add my second color like that. Okay, so here for our gradient type, it's fine at linear. And then for our column uh, gradient direction, I'm going to set this to 340. And then finally, for our start and end position, we're going to set this to 45 and 45. So over here, we can see the shape that we've just created. 
Now it's time to add our margins and our spacing. So I'm going to come over here to design, click on spacing. So the first thing I'm going to do here is to add a negative margin, and this is going to be a minus 100. Now the reason why we're adding this is because we want the shape to be dragged into this row. So I'm going to add, and you can see here that my negative margin has worked because now we have this shape up here. So what we're going to do next now is to start adding our padding values. So here it's going to be 14, 30, and 30 for the left, like that. And then here for the column custom padding, we're going to set 200 to the top and 155 to the bottom. So now we can see that we've just created our shape, which is visible behind these modules. So this is our final design. All we have to do now is to go ahead and save and then publish this page if you haven't already done so. So there you have it. This is our final design. If you like this tutorial, please give me a thumbs up and do follow us on our social media platforms. By doing so, you'll be notified every time we release new tutorials. Until next time, thanks for watching and see you in the next one.